So what's up everybody, welcome back to another vlog. So, today I, I didn't really vlog much throughout the day because there's nothing really to vlog. I'm literally just sitting here in front of my computer, um, going through data, um, sifting through a bunch of stuff, and also getting my CRM running. Um, been a very, 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 very strenuous path. The fact that this this CRM, you know, we're trying to work out the, the little kinks that it has, uh, but it definitely is an absolute killer, killer. I ran a hundred leads through it today. I didn't really get a lot of responses because I expected that. Um, the first, um, what is it? The first question is basically a compliance response. Like, hey, Bob, hey, Dan, hey, George. Are you the end of one, two, three, Main Street? Re uh, reply, end or stop to unsubscribe. I buy, the I buy houses is the name of the company that I'm using. So uh, my actual CRM, here's the logo. So that way everybody knows what it looks like. Yes, that's mine. That's my company. Uh, AIREI, Autopilot Lead Generation. Absolutely love it. It truly is autopilot. Um, so with the hundred leads that ran through there today, any one of them that were landlines were automatically skipped out of the uh, text messaging campaign. Any uh, unvalidated phone numbers were validated as landlines or mobile phone numbers. And they were pushed out of any text messaging marketing. So my error, um, limit is super low like i almost have no errors and if i have any errors the validation is already there and it's kicking on validating phone numbers and making sure that i'm getting them out of all of these text messaging campaigns where they're gonna go next is gonna be um to my cold calling campaigns and that's where where they're gonna live basically so they're skipping you know, through cycle one and going to cycle two. I got three cycles. Just to give you guys a quick look. All right, I'm gonna pick up my camera here and we're gonna handheld this thing. It's probably gonna look terrible, but I don't care. And the lighting's not that great. But just to give you an idea, this is my whiteboard here. And that's where all of these ideas live. This is where basically all my creations happen on this whiteboard. It's really important. If you don't have a whiteboard um, in your office, no matter how big or small, it's funny because I got this one and so I don't trip over stuff. I got another one right here. <laughs> that was actually the whiteboard I started with. And uh, that big old whiteboard over there, I actually want to get rid of it and get a better one. But back over here into the light let me screw this thing back down definitely get yourself a whiteboard if you don't have one and i'm trying to screw this in here there we go so um and the reason is because obviously paper is great i mean I, I, I got paper too i got plenty of paper and as you can see i write on this paper a lot a lot of stuff a lot of formulas and whatnot but when you're truly brainstorming an idea your whiteboard is your best friend. Um, I don't know an entrepreneur that doesn't have a whiteboard. Truly, I don't, I don't. Uh, whether it's big, whether it's small, whether it's handheld or whether it's your wall, if you don't have a whiteboard, you ain't got nothing. Um, so that's what I've been basically going back and forth with as far as trying to come up with a good solution that's compliant. So far today, I did not get one 3007 um code or three zero 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 i think it's thirty thousand seven which is twilio's mark of death that you have been labeled as spam with the compliance phone numbers with the compliance text i think that that's helping i'm gonna try to stay absolutely compliant um every time i ask or or do something and then these people are gonna live with the same phone number forever. I'm not changing their number, that's a problem I had before with Twilio. 
was that, um, you know, I'll market to people and they'll get marketed into a bunch of different phone numbers. And when I would repeat the marketing on them, they would just keep getting marketed into, you know, different phone numbers. And I think that was causing a problem too. I had at one point on Twilio about 140 phone numbers. Um, people ask me all the time, how are you able to send so much text messages if you're only limited to, you know, what is it, 175 per line? The answer is simple, a lot of phone numbers, a lot of phone numbers. They all got forwarded to one place. So it's not like I really needed to, uh, you know, remember which phone number I'm using. But in order to stay compliant and trying to follow through with the carrier's guidelines, not, you know, trying to get, uh, what is it, uh, viewed as spam, I have been trying to basically play by the rules um, because I haven't for a long time. <laughs> but even still, uh, with the 100 that ran through the system, it just everything is is moving smoothly. I'm I'm very happy with the results. I'm gonna actually throw in more people in there tomorrow, um, so that it can continue to cycle through everything. I don't know what my limit is to how many people I can put in there. I'm gonna start off with just throwing in like uh, 300 a day, and see where my limits are. Um, I don't know if I can do that many a day um, at this point, but basically Twilio doesn't want more than three, what is it, 175 or 200 new customers, new customers in a phone line in one day. So if 200 is the limit, maybe 300 is okay, I got five phone lines running. So 300 might be okay because I'm not introducing 300 into one phone line and sent into multiple phone lines. Um, I I have really hacked this thing to the max. Like, I don't know of anybody else that's able to do what I'm doing other than the guys that took my AI class, which, you know, they're gonna be the, you know, I guess the biggest people to prosper because the AI class basically outlines this whole thing there's a lot of stuff that's missing out of it, but the key components that make this system great are in that course. If you haven't grabbed that course, go ahead and sign up for it if you like. Um, it would make you better at marketing you know, altogether because it integrates some other great systems like REI Sift. Um, you know, I was using REI Reply, but now with my system, it's the same backbones as REI Reply. In case you guys don't know, REI Reply is a white label service meaning that um, REI Reply does not own the software, it's owned by another company. Um, REI Reply just sticks their name on it and customizes it to their own liking, which is cool, I love them. They're great people, it just doesn't fit my style of wholesaling anymore. So that's why I ran away and did my own thing. And I encourage you guys to sign up when it is available. So I don't know yet um, as far as pricing, but I know that I'm gonna probably be in the 149 range for anybody that is marketing in one market. Now, when I say one market, I mean like one area, a metro area, I guess. Like Charlotte would count as the metro, but you know, you could be wholesaling anywhere within an hour of Charlotte. If you need multiple markets, like four or five markets, I can do that too. It's just gonna be more money just because there's a lot more moving parts to it and it's gonna put more strain on the system. Um, I got, for me, I, I got it up to five markets at one time is what I could hit. And basically it would send out like 4,000 text messages a day. Now, I don't know what the limits are to the system yet, so I don't know if that's capable of doing that. Um, again, trying to stay within the limits of the compliancy but if we can get 300 people into the system daily, um, you know, that might, might work out. Might not, might work out, but I don't know. Um, maybe I might have to scale it back a little bit and just do 200 people per day per drip line, which would still be okay. Like, even though I'm, I'm putting in 200 leads, um, what the system is doing, so like, let me 
let me visualize this for you guys. Um, I actually got my notepad here so I can pull it up. Actually, I'm, uh, yeah, let me use this one. This one has a lot of pages. I got a notepad that's about to die here, but I guess I'll just use this. So let's say the first phone number you have is uh, this one, all fives. I don't know if you can re read if those are fives or not. So once this number has been messaged, and let's say on the second text message, they say, um, yeah, I'm not the owner. So this is the wrong number. So what the number, what the system is gonna automatically do is, all right, we're gonna replace the main phone number with number two. So basically just like that. And it's gonna keep going, keep going, keep going. And it's going to do it and repeat it every single time and go through the cycle. The cycle is SMS, RVM, cold call. All right, that is the, the cycle. There's three cycles in this, this entire CRM. So each cycle is, is built differently. Um, but with these three cycles, what will happen is if you guys are new in wholesaling, you guys have no idea what a marketing plan is. Um, I basically just built a marketing plan for you. You're literally going to put somebody in the system and it's automatically going to go through the same marketing steps that I go through. Whether you're trying to do 100K a month or if you're just trying to get your first deal, the price that you're going to pay, you're going to get what you want. Because here's the thing, you're going to get an answer to your question. Are you interested in selling that ugly house I drove by or that, you know, tax delinquent vacant fire damage house? You know, you're going to be able to ask the question and somebody will answer eventually because this is going to be very aggressive. It's going to annoy them to death. And they're either going to tell you, Jesus, please stop texting me. I'm not the owner or yeah, man, I'm not, I, I am the owner, but I'm not interested. So you're going to get your results of what you want from your science experiment here. So I guess that's what I've been trying to stress to people and, and show people, uh, that my way of marketing is very different from other people. And that's why I get so many deals. I am extremely aggressive. Like, I mean, I have people tell me, hey, man, I appreciate how aggressive you are, but please leave me alone. You know, like you, you don't give up. And I don't because I want the answer. I want the answer to my question. Are you interested in selling? Are you the owner? So that's pretty much it, guys. I, I haven't had anything else. Um, I, I do have one cool thing. going to go on appointment tomorrow for a follow up that we have been following up with, with a, for a long time. And I controlled an entire block in Shelby, North Carolina, and we're almost getting to close. So many title issues with that. Um, older man, uh, funny deal out of that. So about a year and a half ago, I had a package deal under contract. A, a lady, she was not very nice. She uh, probably would have punched me in the face if it wasn't illegal. And she probably hated me because of, you know, color of my skin. You guys might not know this, but I am a Latino American. And <laughs> it turns out that this deal that we're doing right now, the guy owed that lady money. So she had a DOT, a deed of trust against the property for like $40,000. Me and my partner laughed about it. I was like, I can't believe what a small world this is. And I told them, I was like, well, are we gonna call her or is the attorney office gonna call her? Cause if we called her, I know she hated our guts cause I don't think she's ever been involved with selling property because her husband was the one who built this portfolio and he died. So I'm guessing he handled everything, but she, she wanted us to close in like 14 days on 20 properties, all right? It's a lot of title work. Her husband died. There was a trust put out. It was a lot of stuff, a lot of moving parts in there. It took 60 days to close. Actually, Jim Kittridge came out there to see it. He passed on it just because these houses were pretty beat up. 
and that's not Jim's forte. Yeah, I know Jim sometimes buys really, really beat up stuff, but he was looking for a, um, not more of a turnkey package, but something that he could uh, depreciate a little bit better because there wasn't much to depreciate. Those houses were beat to crap. But uh, yeah, so that was a whole fiasco. Finally getting closer to closing. My, my freaking Charlotte deal is, is giving me headaches because it still hasn't closed. So we got money up in the air there. Um, we're gonna end up probably closing on the, um, what's it call it, the Rock Hill deal because we sent it out. Initially, we had a lot of movement. We had over 15 people contact. And then all of a sudden, like I, I threw it back out there and nobody wanted it. So we're probably just gonna close on it and throw it on the MLS and see where it goes. Um, there's a lot of room there. So actually physically buying the property, we're buying it cash. Yeah, I know it's $80,000 cash. Um, don't really have to use hard money, but um, you know, it is what it is. As you guys start to grow, this is where saving your money really comes into place. Um, because I know that, you know, Grant Cardone and, you know, Rich Dad are always telling people don't save money, you know, cash is trash. It's true. But when you're using money to make you money, that's a different story. If it's just sitting in your bank account, not doing anything, do something with it. Whether you're just gonna, you know, invest it in stocks, bonds, or buying rental properties, whatever, you know, just do something with it. Um, so those are the updates that I have. Still have my land, hasn't closed yet. Um, probably by the time you guys see this, it might get close to closing. And then I have another lot that we just assigned today. Wait, no, we didn't assign that lot, but we're probably gonna put it on the MLS. That's what it was. We're gonna put that lot on the MLS today or uh, tomorrow, something like that. And we're gonna see what kind of movement we have. I've noticed a really big shift in the market as far as buyers go. Not a lot of flippers buying, builders, man, there's only a few builders buying, very few. Um, I know some guys that are still buying in, in very particular areas, um, but some of them are not buying at all. So what that means is that I got to pivot. Even though I'm, I'm using investor lift, I know there's a lot of investors that are not technology savvy and they're still relying on their uh, realtors to find them deals. They don't really deal with wholesalers. So what's funny is that my burnt house, I'm selling it to an investor and the investor's realtor reached out to me, asked me how long I've been wholesaling. I told him and he's like, man, that's incredible. How can I get deals from you? And I was like, hey man, sign up for uh, you know my, my email list. And he didn't know how to do it. So I had to physically go in there and do it and help him out. And it hit me, I was like, wait, there's guys, because this guy deals with a lot of investors. So I know for a fact that he could link me with other people that I, I probably wouldn't be able to reach through cold calling, through texting, through all my other means. But if I can get them on board, you know, now I got them in my system. I got these new buyers that were basically, you know, standing by watching the market. And now that it's kind of rolled over, they're coming out and wanting to buy. They're just not tech savvy, man. It's just the way it is. And some of these guys are old, you know, they're still rocking flip phones, <laughs> just to give you an idea. But that's it for today, guys. I'm gonna cut this short because this is, I've just been rambling on for about 20 minutes now. But, you know, hopefully things plan out or hopefully things pan out and we can get a lot of stuff, you know, going and rolling, you know, trying to get my text messaging back up. Also redesigned the system a lot to accommodate like a lot of things, a lot of features that I wasn't using in REI Reply that I didn't know how to set up. And now I kind of have, you know, an idea of how to set those stuff up. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I know it wasn't really exciting, but hopefully tomorrow will be better. So catch you guys on another vlog and wish you all the best.